Hi everybody, it's a rainy day here in Northern Illinois. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Rita Hickman. I'm a body mind expert, I'm a shiatsu massage therapist, I'm an Asian medicine energy worker, and I'm a master intuitive healer, which means that um, I help people navigate their life uh, by paying attention to the signs and the signals around me and uh, really grounding it in uh, my life experience and their life experience. So anyways, <laughs> today's topic is a few words about ghosts. So I actually want to kind of get started. It's, it's a fun topic. And I'll tell you how I got to this topic today. So last night, uh, I was working with my coaching group that, that I'm leading. And uh, I was doing a training on Rescue 911, which was uh, basically if you, you have a sensory a based emergency toolkit that you carry around with you so that when you feel stressed, instead of disassociating or getting angry and blowing up or um, freaking out, hi, Kathy, instead of, uh, you know, doing all the things which will actually kind of sabotage your life, you can go into your senses and you can get your needs met and uh, that will keep you from dealing with your stress in a very negative way. So it was, you know, it was a great training and I really liked it. And um, it got me thinking about how we use these kits to course correct. Meaning that the faster you can notice that something is going on, then the faster you can course correct and do something different. So, you know, these kits only work if you use them. And uh, so when you notice as fast as possible that you're going down the wrong path, if you pay attention, you know, if you say, okay, I'm going down the wrong path, then you can use your emergency kit, your, you know, stress kit to kind of get you back on, on the correct path. And so because I've been, you know, looking at course correction and thinking about it lately, and I've been noticing my own body, you know, it's winter. Hi, Sharon. Great to see you. It's winter um, and it's tax season. And Lisa's here too. Great. It's winter and it's tax season and, you know, it's been cold and, uh, and I've been up to my eyeballs, <laughs> you know, finishing a coaching program and, and starting and creating my new coaching program. So I've been having to look at course correcting. And um, so this morning, you know, I, last night I made sure that I ate my peanut butter, you know, Ezekiel bread toast and, and got my water back up and I took some Advil before I went to bed. Hi, India. Great to see you. And I took some, you know, some Advil before I went to bed so that I would know, okay, I need to have a, a really good start to my day. So today, I was like, I'm going to make sure I have my space and my time. I've been a little worn out and, and overwhelmed. And uh, so I took my space and my time, and I paid attention to what was going on in my body. And one of the things that I noticed was right underneath my diaphragm, uh, it felt uncomfortable. Now, the rule of thumb is when you feel something uncomfortable and you've got the time to deal with it, then you need to go into you need to go into it. You need to go into that space, find out what's going on, or at least be present with it. Um, you know, not deny it and ignore it and run the opposite direction, but say, okay, what's going on? And as soon as I went to that space right underneath my diaphragm, and it's a chakra that we uh, ignore a lot that people don't pay much attention to because they're worried about their throat chakra choking up or their heart chakra being too sensitive or their third eye, you know, what wisdom do I see? And we tend to ignore the chakra, that, that space right underneath our diaphragm. And I said, how interesting that this is all, you know, tight and, uh, and a little uncomfortable today. So I rested my hands on it because that's how I get present. I rested my hands on that part of my body and I had a memory come up into my head. And the memory was a conference I'd been to about mm, two, three years ago. And um, I'd gone to this conference and we were all housed in this dorm on these grounds which had been used to train priests and nuns. And so it was this big dorm and, you know, tiny little rooms and, you know, a chapel and, and beautiful location on beautiful grounds. And they now used it to do conferences. And part of the time of that conference, I had sat in the lobby and I had just kind of escaped from everybody. It was a little bit of a quiet place. And I sat with it and I was present, you know, with the space. And I didn't think anything about it. I thought, okay, you know, I'll sit here for a while. And I didn't think anything about it after that. But today, 
for whatever reason, as I'm laying there, I put my hand on that diaphragm, you know, right underneath my diaphragm, and I said, wow, and I pictured myself right there in that space again. And I said, what is going on? And my mind immediately went to this great little science experiment they had done about, um, about bacteria. They had taken the medium that they'd grown bacteria in, and they completely sterilized it, sterilized it like two or three times. There was not a, a hint of that bacteria, not in anything. There should have been nothing left of that bacteria in that, in that medium. And they, they took it, like a Petri dish filled with it, of just the medium, completely sterilized, could be used for anything. Uh, they took that medium and they let it sit. And what happened is, in that medium, the bacteria began to grow again. And this is why. Because everything carries a vibration. Everything leaves an imprint. I have very smart, logical, well put together women who come into my space, and my space has been around, oh, probably about 60 years now, who come into my therapy space and they'll see ghosts, they'll see images, uh, dogs and people and, and women. And, and so, you know, I'm a space where people see things. I don't see anything, that's not mine, I'm kinesthetic, but they'll, they'll see things. And it's because probably these people who have been in the space, everywhere we go, everything that we do, we, live in, we leave an imprint behind us. We, we're always vibrating everywhere we go. And wherever we've been, that imprint, that vibration, ends up leaving a, a pattern of its vibration behind. It's absorbed into the walls. It's absorbed into the ground, into the very soil. I've had mentors who will go around the world and they'll help heal parts of the world that have been in tragedy because that pain and that sorrow and suffering. Hi, Natu Vadat. I can't even pronounce your name. I'm so sorry, but I'm glad you're here. Um, anyways, they will go around the world and they will heal uh, the vibration that has been left behind of this sorrow and anger so a place can heal. So, you know, the question is, do ghosts exist? exist? I believe, and this is my thought process behind it, that wherever we go, we leave imprints behind. And some people may see these imprints, you know, like my friends who visit my space. Some people will feel them like when you go to uh, Sedona and you go into the vortexes and you feel different, you can feel the vortex, you feel a little bit different in the space. Or when you go into somebody's house and it just feels wrong or like there was something that happened there. Um, we leave imprints everywhere we go and it's absorbed into the, into the matter, into the very air that's around us. And even though it can be completely cleansed and sterilized and everything put out, um, it leaves an imprint behind. So I had a friend who was 100% um, Native American, and uh, you know, so people looked up to them. They asked their opinion for things on uh, spiritual matters, and they would go to fairs and they would go places and they would pick up leather that's been tanned. And people would say, "Well, where did that leather come from? Do you know, you know, the lineage of it? Was it?" you know, trapped fairly and humanely and kindly. And, uh, you know, what's, what's the story behind it? And, and that's important. Of course, it's extraordinarily important. Uh, but he took a little bit different uh, direction. He says it doesn't matter because I'm putting my love into this piece, into this piece of leather that I'm going to use for a rattle or a drum. I'm putting my love into this space. And because I'm putting my love into it, it will uh, take the vibration and it will change it. It will metamorphosize it. It will evolve it into something different and something new and something beautiful. So this is something to think about. When you feel like you just don't feel right and everything's wrong uh, and you're uncomfortable, remember, it's not always something that you know is affecting you. Hi Daniel, great to see you. There are a lot of things affecting you all around you all the time. 
And so the only things you can do something about is deal with how do I want to feel? What do I want to do about this? And course correct. Maybe I need a little bit more water to dial it down. Maybe I need you know, more fiber or to balance out my blood sugar or to feel something soft. Maybe I need a little bit of meditation time. You know, so you're feeling things, seeing things all the time that you aren't aware of, that's been left behind, these ghosts of people who have come before you and things that have happened before you. You can feel it. I've got uh, my same friend who sees ghosts extremely logical, extremely, you know, put together woman. She also does search and rescue. And in places where there's been tragedy, her dogs are hypersensitive to that tragedy. If it's been uh, something really painful, they will notice and they'll react to that vibration and that energy. So don't just think that you're broken or you're screwed in the head or there's something wrong with you. Instead, think that there's a lot going on that you aren't aware of, that you aren't consciously aware of. And your mind will come up with a reason to explain it, but because it doesn't know, hi Veronica, because it doesn't know, you know, it doesn't tap into that. It doesn't realize, oh, it's because, you know, someone died here a hundred years ago, or something happened here a few days ago that was difficult for somebody. You don't know what's affecting you. You don't know what's um, interacting with your body and making you feel the way that you do. And so instead of uh, freaking out, getting angry, disassociating, you know, doing the things that we do to protect ourselves. Instead, help yourself feel better, get out your kit, do what you need to do physically to get regrounded, and then tune into it. And you might find that there was a lot more going on you were aware of. And from a wise opinion, you can change that vibration by sending out a different vibration. So when you come at that space in a, in a feeling and felt sense of care and compassion, nurturing and love, you can change and clean and heal the vibration of what's going on around you. So rule of thumb, if you feel uncomfortable, make sure you get your needs met, do something sense-based that keeps you from checking out or keeps you from being overwhelmed by your sensations, and then check in and, you know, and be in that space of caring and be in that space of compassion and love because that vibration will change, will morph and metamorphosize the, the vibration that could be absorbed into the walls or the floor that's around you, okay? So those are my thoughts on ghosts today. <laughs> Hopefully they were kind of helpful, uh, but it's definitely from a body-mind perspective, from a kinesthetic perspective not from a mystical story one. And I always found the Petri dish thing pretty darn interesting uh, and, and makes us question and go, hmm, what is going on? Okay, so that's it for today. Have a fabulous rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, bye.